There is a generation of women who lived through a depression, a world war, and a sexual revolution. They were mentors and mothers, but most importantly, they inspired us by paving the way for us to live our lives with more choices. We asked them about their fashion sensibility through the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They tell us their story through the clothes they wore. I was 14, 15. I was pretty young. And my father bought me a sewing machine. Of course it was used. These were depression times, you have to understand. <laughs> and they offered a sewing class at my high school, and I jumped on it. And I just, I just loved it. I, I just felt fulfilled when I could uh, put something together and uh, look good. About it? Well, I worked for a newspaper, and uh, they always needed fillers. Uh -huh. um, and uh, the photographer had noticed me in the building, and he asked me if I'd be willing to go to the park and have he take a few pictures. And I said, sure. And I surprised everybody. The next morning they opened up the paper and there I was. <laughs> so I probably had some expensive shoes on because even then I was buying expensive shoes. Shame on me. I wanted something simple and uh, so I picked something out and I went to the fabric uh, section and found this lovely lace. But I, when I found it I knew it was what I wanted. It had a scalloped edge. That was very important. I needed a scalped edge. <laughs> so. I loved my going away suit. Art and I drove up to Santa Barbara. Art took, had a, left his camera and he took a few pictures of me and that's one of them on the wall. Very, very, very possible it was a Christian Dior pattern from Vogue because I, I, liked, uh, I liked his patterns. I, I, they were beautiful. Uh, my stepmother used to go play. She said the only place my father ever took her was church on Sunday and she was annoyed. And I lived pretty much the same life. <laughs> church on Sunday was when I dressed up. <laughs> I loved the collar. That, and that was definitely a Vogue pattern. I remember that. About that outfit. Oh, I loved the way it fit. I loved the full skirt and the nipped in waist. and. And wasn't I gorgeous? <laughs> sure. Oh, so it's what, all you, you children. Uh, we we dressed you all up. And I think I made uh, several of those dresses for the girls, and I uh, made my own outfit. And I love that it was a boucle. It was a rust boucle, and uh, it was a lovely fabric, Four. quality fabric because there's no point in spending all that time making something and have it fall apart six months later. Some of them were, were special because probably the fabric and the pattern worked out so well and uh, I couldn't get rid of them. I would war, I would just wear them until they, they couldn't be worn anymore. I just, I just loved some of my outfits. Um, my mother never threw anything away, so I, but this, whatever she made for me, I felt like, uh, you know, I, I need to keep it because uh, she, she made, there is so much labor and love involved in it. My mother liked, you know, elegant with something on the back and some pleats here and... Oh, this is my, my before the engagement, it's uh, the tying of the, uh, the words, uh, the we, hoskap we call it, and so it's a promise that uh, I will, my parents said yes, we will give you our daughter in marriage. Oh, okay. and when I got engaged, I went out to an engagement party and I didn't have a dress to wear and, uh, for that occasion and she made me that dress. Oh. And then we went to Lebanon to wait for our visas and uh, that one night we went out because we had not been out for <laughs> I don't know how long and uh, I never used to smoke but just for the picture oh, I, wonderful. I thought you know I want to look glamorous and so that's what I did. She used to recycle a lot. Actually my wedding dress you know she changed the, the lining she Bought, we bought champagne color uh, satin 
and she made it into a short dress and I wore that a few times. My husband had just gotten that car so we wanted to show the car to the rest of the family and so I wanted to be on the <laughs> Oh, this is uh, another one of my mother's dresses and this is in Libya too. See, my mother was back in Egypt, my parents were back in Egypt so I would always try to send pictures and make it look like, oh, we're having so much fun. <laughs> Did you always wear a hat? No, no, just to show off in uh -huh. the picture. <laughs> oh, this suit, I made it, if you can believe it. Well, it looks nice from far away, but somebody who understands <laughs> looked at it one time because I was so proud of myself, I showed her. When we were in Lebanon, I thought, okay, my mother is not the only one who can sew, maybe I can sew too. When we were kids, we used to play paper dolls. June and I, I guess the June, and we, we drew the doll, and we drew the clothes, and we drew clothes for the doll over and over and over again. So we liked to do that. So I had no problem with designing a wedding dress. I knew what I wanted. No, there, that's me. Yeah, that's my going away outfit. Yeah. It must have been early 60s. Yeah, I would have said the 62. And that dress? That was a poochie. A poochie? Did you have a lot of poochies? Yes, I had poochies. Did you like Poochie? I love Poochies. Yeah, we wore hats all the time. People wore hats to din out to dinner, dinner mm -hmm. in a restaurant. Not at someone's house, but at a restaurant. What is it? Oh, we went to um, Europe. I went to Europe with my friend Ellen. Every afternoon at 5.30, we had, or 6.30, we had champagne and caviar. I bought it, and I had it when I was married to Paul. There was, I guess there were going to be parties before the wedding, like, and so I was going to take that. Paul said, if you take that, you can't wear that dress. It's disgusting. It's obscene. I said, I'm going to wear it. If you wear that dress, I'm not going. I said, okay. But he didn't go, and I think he regretted it because he backed himself into a corner. Oh, I care how I look, because I, and I care how colors go together, and, but that's part of how everything goes together. I, it's all the same thing. Balance, design, composition. I love fashion and I thought I would be going into fashion myself. I went into, you know, the retailing as part of my co-op jobs and then when I saw how terrible and hard working it was, I'm like, I'm out of here. This is so, not, you know, what else are you gonna do? You walk around the department store, you see the beautiful clothes buy clothes. I mean, I spent more money there than I earned probably at the time, but uh, by 59, it ended up being like the uh, JFK, you know, Jacqueline Kennedy kind of look. And that's where, if you look at the pink coat that I had, very straight, very, you know, uh, the only thing I introduced to the hat, I never wore the pillbox hats, I couldn't take those, but the hat I wore with that coat was so different. It, now in those days, it was just, it, you, you wouldn't think of going anywhere without your gloves, your handbag, uh, especially to a church, you know. Let's say there's one hat I uh, had that was more like, not quite a turban, but it fit into your head, you know, like, and they came long so you could flip it around here and put a pin in, and it made the whole outfit. That was uh, the Easter that uh, everybody thought we were going to be engaged, and we didn't get engaged, but my husband got me a corsage. Uh, we were just outside of church, and everybody was ready to congratulate us, but there was no ring then. We kind of like threw them off base when we got the ring. I've always worn comfortable clothes, even though they're dressy. The simpler, the better it's the fabric and, and the look that it gives, the sheen or whatever. I was pregnant on my daughter, so that was my big, uh, the dress was made my, by my sister to match the, the coat that I had. I don't think people know uh, fine, fine clothing anymore. Fine clothing. Um, even today, I, I buy very few things, but things I really like that will carry me through the years. Uh, mangez bien, riez beaucoup, et soyez chic.